for a moment, when you talk about your interest in women's issues, it is interesting. The Equal Rights Amendment has not passed, but talk right. about some of the other progress or some of the issues that you uh, worked very hard on that were near and dear to you in that area of the women's movement. Oh, yes. I've seen some tremendous advances that have been made since that time. I like to say the women's movement put the movement into me. And at that time, if a woman wanted to be a Rhodes Scholar, forget it. She couldn't merely because she was a woman. At that time, when you looked at the want ads, one section for women, one section for, for men. Uh, you, they just couldn't see that the jobs could come together and a woman could do both. This is the 1970s we're talking about. That's right. About. <laughs> this is the 1970s that we're talking about. Um, things have certainly changed in that regard. Um, and we've made many advances in other areas. We've made advances in professions, for instance, law. Uh, we've come a long way from the time that um, a woman back around 1875 named Myra Bradwell, she had gone to law school and she wanted to practice before the courts. And so a judgment had to be made by the court. And it was a Justice Bradley who issued the verdict, which was, you cannot you cannot practice as a woman. And he said, and I quote, the natural and proper timidity of women unfits them for certain professions of civil life. The paramount destiny of woman is as wife and mother. This is the law of the creator. Well, Sandy Day O'Connor, when she became the first woman on the Supreme Court, cited Justice Bradley for that statement. And so now as we look at the law profession, we see women uh, not only practicing lawyers, but we see them as judges. We see them involved in all kinds of um, advocacy. Medicine, the same kind of thing. Science, we need to do more. I had a commission uh, through legislation for women in science and technology, included also minorities and people with handicaps. That has established partnerships throughout the country. Uh, one that's in San Diego, um, Call, call best, um, you know, bringing engineering and science uh, and technology, but more still needs to be done in that area. So domestic violence, um, major uh, benefit. Um, even looking in our area, the National Institutes of Health now has an Office of Research on Women's Health. They never did before. Women were not treated like they were different from men, so women were considered little men but now they have a special office there for that where they look at differences anatomically. So clearly in your legislative career, you, you had a big emphasis and, 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 and really worked hard to champion issues for women. I want to I want to turn to more of the personal nature that yeah. you know, a lot of these things uh, you were focused on and looking at getting involved in politics, but it was a challenge you were also raising a very large family. And I think a lot, some people know the story, but but others do not of how you raised nine well, children. It's the kind of thing that you do what you really feel you have to do. I had one sister and uh, four brothers, and my sister uh, uh, had six children. She had gone to Boston College, who had been married, and had children one right after another, including twins. And then she and her husband divorced, and then she found out she had cancer. And uh, she had a, a, a lymphoma which had gone through the breast, and so it was pretty fast working. So my husband agreed that we would take her six children into our family with our three children, and so we did. So therefore, six plus three is nine, and so we had nine children. So I'd go to the grocery store, and I'd have three, three of the carriages with, you know, gallons of milk and cereal and bread and whatever. and, and very often a cashier would say, well, you are really stocking up for months, <laughs> aren't you? And I'd say, no, this is four days. <laughs> and so you learn you learned to adapt. But, but amazingly, you, you, you balanced the, the, this amazing task with all these children, and yet we're so focused on, on, on being able to balance that with your career. Um, uh, you told me something we talked long before the show, and I, and I would say, you know, how, how can you do all that? Why would you want to do that? And you said something about getting out of the house. Oh, <laughs> I think when people have asked me that question that you did, Steve, I'd say, well, it's so good to get out of the house. <laughs> well, we got her out of the house today, but we're going to take a short break, come back uh, much more with Connie Morella. Stay tuned. You're watching Campus Conversations.